What's going on, wrestling family? Welcome back to the channel. So WWE Backlash 2024 in France is in the books, and guess what time it is? It's time to review the show. Now, before we get started, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it. So before I get started, I want to say salute to that crowd in France. You guys are the best crowd that I've ever seen in any PLE, any pay-per-view, in the history of me watching wrestling. I've been watching wrestling for a long time, so you guys made this experience amazing all right I, I could feel it through the tv screen and i'm like i can only imagine how it feels to be there there's no way you can feel anything or heal anything because you guys are jumping up and down and chanting you see everything shaking the cameraman is like <laughs> trying to focus on the match and then the first thing that came in my mind i was like you know what it'll be amazing if they learn how to swag surf imagine how crazy it will look that whole building will lean over to some side to side if they learn how but at the end of the day Amazing crowd. Now, I did see some people complain about the fact that they keep chanting throughout the show, throughout the PLE, and, you know, to each their own, that's their own opinion. But I think we got to remember, WWE hasn't been in France in 10 years. And even when they were there 10 years ago, that was just a house show. This is their first PLE ever. So why shouldn't they be that hype? I don't understand why they wouldn't. This is their WrestleMania slash their Olympics. That's the same thing I said about Australia. They haven't seen it in a long time. And you got to also understand that as a crowd, they are conditioned to watching soccer matches. And if you've ever been to a professional soccer match or football or whatever you want to call it, this is how the crowds are. Because that is a part of the experience is to go crazy, to get hyped, to chant throughout the entire match, to have fun with your friends. And just let the people celebrate and enjoy the thing that we love. I don't understand why people care about how people enjoy wrestling or whatever. As long as they're not hurting anybody, let them do their thing. But let's get to the match. So the first match on this card was a match that I was excited to see because I knew this match was going to be brutal because the feud between these two groups were getting personal, was getting brutal, was getting bloody, and I specifically just wanted to see how Kevin Owens and Tamatanga, my guy, interacted in the ring because it seemed like they hate each other, but they're kind of similar. They're both people who just likes to fight and don't want to back down, and it's the tag team match between Randy Orton and Kevin Owens versus the Diet Bloodline, Solo Sokol, and my boy Tama. Tonga. Now, before I get into the point that everybody wants to talk about, I will say I love the fact that this match transitioned from a traditional tag team match into a no disqualification match because they were getting a little bit out of hand. Security came out. Nick Aldis came out with the microphone and said, hey, you guys can't legally kill each other in this match, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it legal for you guys to kill each other. I'm going to turn this match into the Hunger Games. No disqualification. And then once he announced that, I think everybody collectively were like, oh my God, it's about to get bad. And that's what happened. It got brutal. It got bad. And Tamatanga, salute to him for taking all these bumps. The welts that he had on his back from the kendo sticks looked crazy. The brain buster. That super brain buster he took from Kevin Owens on top of four chairs. Dude, I, Tama Tonga is earning his stay in WWE, and I love how they're handling him here. Um, I, I'm just like, man, if this happened 10 years ago, it would have been terrible for him, but he came at the right time. Now, the, the part that everybody wants to talk about is we saw Tonga Loa show up, and you know me. I was going crazy because if you watch this channel, I've been waiting for over a decade for at least Tama Tonga to come to WWE and Tonga Loa because I, my dream match for a while was to see Gorillas of Destiny versus the Usos. And with Tonga Loa being here, this match is about to happen. There's one person who didn't believe that I said this before uh, it happened. Let me show you what I said in my prediction video. Now, I'm excited about this because this is the WWE in-ring debut of Tama Tonga. I've been waiting for almost over a decade for him to come to WWE because I hoped to see a Gorillas of Destiny versus Usos match. So all WWE got to do at this point is to bring in Tonga Loa and I'll be a happy wrestling fan. And that's exactly what I said and that's exactly what I meant. I'm excited about that. If they they give Tonga Loa and Tama Tonga whatever the next pay-per-view they have, a tag team match, they got to give them the face paint and they got to give them the Firing Squad theme song. If they do that, I'm going to lose my mind. But overall... This match was amazing, and a great win for Solo Sokoa, regardless of how it happened, he definitely needed it, and a great way to establish the new bloodline. So that means if Jacob Fatu comes, or when he does come, that has to mean that he's going to join uh, Jimmy, Jay, Roman, I, I guess, right? That would have to happen. I think, personally for me, if you ask me, I think Jimmy is going to help Jay fight off uh, the Judgment Day, with it, with it being Finn Balor and JD McDonough. I think that's what's going to happen to bring Jimmy back when he comes back after his injury. That's just my prediction. But anyways, 
let's move on to the next match. So the next match we had on the card is for the WWE Women's Title. It was a triple threat match between the current champion Bailey versus Tiffany Stratton and Naomi. Now, <laughs> people in France, okay, and wrestling crowd. I only have one small critique about the people in France, okay? And this is not anything bad. bad. It's, it's just nitpicking, so you can even completely ignore this. This does not change anything at all, but I just got to bring it up, okay? When Naomi came out and she did a whole, you know, chant with her entrance and things like that, France, you guys were a little bit off, okay? That's all I got to say. 99.9%, 100% .9 of the time, you guys were fantastic, but at that point, you guys were a little bit off. And you guys could do it because I seen you do it right with Jay Uso later on down the line, so I don't know why... <laughs> Guys were a little bit off with Naomi. Maybe the next time they come to France, you guys do a little bit more practicing, clean that up a little bit. We'll be all right. But otherwise, you guys are fantastic during this match. But overall, I think this match was pretty good. Bailey won it. I think this was an obvious choice. It was just an opportunity for Bailey to get a pretty good win on a PLE under her belt as champion. It wasn't time for Naomi for sure. It wasn't time for Tiffany Stratton, of course. Although I love Naomi, Tiffany Stratton is extremely talented. I think Tiffany Stratton is going to win that money in the bank briefcase. And for Naomi. For Naomi, WWE, please, I've only asked you guys for a couple things. I asked you guys to redesign those tag team titles. You guys have done that. I asked you guys to bring Tonga Loa and Tama Tonga to WWE so I can get the Gorillas of Destiny versus the Usos. You guys have done it. I've asked you guys to give me Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles for the first time ever at a PLE. You guys have done that. The last thing I've been asking you guys is please give these ladies a mid-card title. I think Naomi will be a fantastic inaugural mid-carder, in my personal opinion. Maybe other people would disagree and pick other people. I'm not mad at you to Easter own, but I think it'll be fantastic for her. I think she deserves that opportunity. It'll be great to see her have a title with the you know the lights, the LED lights all over it. I think that'll be great. You can sell a bunch of those to kids. Like I think there's so many ways you can win off of this. But at the end of the day, this match was, was pretty good. It was pretty good at the end of the day. So the next match we had on the card was for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, which I thought was kind of weird that it was in the middle of this card. But I guess if they were trying to do a alternating matches between men's women, men's women thing. But anyway, it doesn't even matter. We had this match right here between Damian Priest versus Jey Uso. Now, I want to shout out the France crowd because I said something, some critiques before. I got to give you guys praises, too. What you guys did, that scene when the cameraman had the back of Jey Uso showing you guys doing this with the lights on your phones. Classic, amazing moment. You guys killed it. Don't know why you didn't do it to a sister-in-law, but that don't matter. But here, you guys killed it. It was a fantastic moment. I got, France, I got to go to a, a show in France. I got to go to something in France because you guys you guys are on my vibe when it comes to these shows. But anyway, um, this match here was a pretty good match. I, I kind of knew the outcome before I said Damian Priest has to win it, and I told people that Jey Uso, it wasn't his time yet, and I think... They kind of agree. Either WWE agrees that it's not Jay's time or it's not time for Damian Priest to drop that title yet. And we saw what happened. JD McDonough came in and tried to help out. Damian Priest was pretty mad. Like, what are you doing here? Why are you here? Which is completely disrespectful because if I told you not to come here and you decide to, to pay over thousands of dollars to fly over here and do the exact thing I told you not to do. Oh, yeah, that, that's <laughs> he spent money to disrespect me. All right, bro, we got bad blood. And then Finn Balor shows up and then he's like, what are you doing here, too? He grabs Finn Balor by the beard and just like try to crush his jaw. I'm like, that's kind of disrespectful. So this shows that the blood, not the bloodline, but the judgment day is, is starting to split up. Like mommy's gone and they don't know how to handle themselves. Like kids, when their mom leave the room, they all just start fighting and everything like that. That's what's happening here. But at the end of the day. I felt like the match was pretty decent. Now, this goes back to what I said about WrestleMania 40 when it came to the Usos. Not that that match was compared to this one. This match was pretty good. But what I'm saying is that I felt like before Jay and Jimmy's match at WrestleMania 40, they should have added more moves to their move set. Give Jimmy more aggressive moves. Give Jay more, I mean, cleaner moves to add to his move set so that he don't have to just do the super kick all the time. And I'm fine with the super kick, but at some point when he starts having matches and stuff like that you start to notice it more and more that super kicks are happening all the time and jay is a great wrestler he's not a bad wrestler i i really believe whatever moves they give him he can absolutely do it so if they want to give him more moves before they make him a champion so it doesn't feel like that that's what we're watching all the time because when you watch some of his matches they're they're, they're good and then once you get to a certain point once you get to the midpoint to, to the later half of the match you start to see a ton of super kicks over and over and over. And, you know, it doesn't bother me, but I just wish that he can do more. So when he becomes champion, he has so many different ways that he can handle these matches along the way, depending on who's in the ring with them. But at the end of the day, you know, Damian Peace re retained. That made sense. Great match for Jey Uso. Um, 
you know, we see what's going to happen with the Judgment Day. And yeah, it was a pretty good match. So the next match we had on the card was for the Women's Tag Team Championship belts between the Kabuki Warriors versus Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair. Now, this was another match that was pretty predictable, but I think this pay-per-view in its entirety is a testament of predictability doesn't mean anything as long as the ride from beginning to end is amazing. It does not matter. It doesn't make or break anything. Now, if it's predictable and bad or unpredictable and bad, those two things are both bad, okay? But this match here, I thought was pretty good. There were some spots here that seemed kind of weird and off, but it wasn't enough to ruin it for me. I'm super happy for Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair. I felt like this was destiny as soon as Jay Cargill arrived. And even though the Kabuki Warriors were healed, I feel bad for them because little Kyrie Sane was just getting tossed around like a rag doll and thrown all over the place. But I guess that's what happens when you get in the ring with Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair. Have you seen the guns on these ladies? You, you got yourself in that situation. But at the end of the day, what I loved about this match most and what I love about the tag team of Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair outside of them winning these titles because they look fantastic with those things, those tag team moves that they're doing in the ring, I love that, man. I, I feel like they don't really showcase or at least have done that in a long time when it comes to WWE. Outside of AOP, I don't really care about their, their tag team finisher when they pick up two people, clap their backs together and power bomb them. It, it, it's just weird to me. But the stuff that Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair was doing in the ring together, amazing amazing there are some spots that look kind of off but they're going to clean that up and that's going to look amazing and what they're doing with jay cargill makes all the sense in the world because i know a lot of people comment on how she's green in the ring and how she's not that good and she's not in the ring that long that's fine that's what you're supposed to do you're supposed to hide the person's weakness and showcase their strength while building up the things that they are making mistakes on behind the scenes that's what the that's what the pc is for right? That's what the performance center is for. That's what house matches is for. But you don't try to figure out something new on a PLE. That's not the place to do it. So once once uh, Jay Cargill gets to that point where it makes sense for her, I think that'll be the opportunity where Bianca Belair will turn on her and they can have an amazing match against each other at WrestleMania 41. But for this match in particular, at the end of the day, I thought it was a pretty good match. And again, I love that crowd in France. Let's move on to the next one. So the final match on the card is a match that you guys know that ever since Cody Rhodes came back to WWE, I've been begging WWE to put together, but I wanted to, to do it on a bigger PLE and we had it happen here. Doesn't matter because France definitely made this feel like a WrestleMania moment. And this match here was a banger. One of my favorite moments as far as laughing was the part where Cody Rhodes did the cartwheel. He did the uh, Stardust chant because AJ Styles made fun of him being Stardust on SmackDown. And Cody Rhodes was like, hey, you making fun of Stardust? Guess who beating the brakes off you? Stardust. <laughs> and I thought that was amazing. But... At the end of the day, I love this match because outside of it just being good, it showcased what Cody Rhodes is good at and what people, I guess, don't really want to wait on because Cody Rhodes is great at telling stories in the ring and on the mic, he's great at forwarding stories. When he doesn't, the, the only weakness is that if he doesn't have any story to work with, then on the mic, a lot of people will take it as he's boring. He has nothing to talk about. He has nothing, but he's skilled at elevating story. And that's what he did in this ring. And the back and forth between each other, the finishers being hit, things like that. I thought it was fantastic. And I think at the end of the day, for me wanting it to happen on a bigger PLE, I think they're going to stretch this out. And they have to. I think they have to. And I think their next match, mark my words, mark my words on this. I think their next match is going to be way better than this one because now if it happens at like a Money in the Bank, they got time to tell a story. And like I said, Cody Rhodes worked better. His matches are bigger. His matches are better when it's the second, third time around. And if it has some story added on to it because that's the specialty. I don't want to forget AJ Styles because he did a fantastic job in the ring. Is he at his prime like he used to be? Probably not. I mean, he's getting older, but he's better than a lot of wrestlers than we can mention right now. So he did a fantastic job in the ring as well when it comes to telling the story in the ring, going back and forth and everything like that. So I can't wait to see their next match. Cody Rhodes retain. What a great title defense for him and the best match of the night, in my personal opinion. One of my favorite matches of the year overall when it comes to wrestling. Man, I, 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 WWE... You guys did your thing with this one. France, you guys were an amazing crowd. Now, people watching this video, thank you so much for supporting me. Salute. What was your favorite moment and what was your favorite match in this pay-per-view? Let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much. Have a great day.